Make use of the promo code LVDBF during Black Friday to get a 15% discount on Magic Singles at FlipSideGaming.com while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Boros Angels, a red-white mid-range deck that for the most part is just a pile of good cards. We do have a little bit of synergy as well between Lara Dawnbringer being a 5 mana 5-5 five five angel with flying first rank and lifelink, giving other angels we control plus one plus one and lifelink, and we do have a few other angels between Aurelia and then a resplendent angel which can generate even more angel tokens. But let's take a look at the entire deck list here, starting with our one drops, where we have two copies of Shock as a cheap removal spell, letting us interact early in the game. We've got four copies of Adanto Vanguard as a nice threat, especially against the control decks, since we can pay for life to make it indestructible until enough turn, and attacks as a 3-1, so can add up to quite a bit of damage pretty quickly. We've got four copies of Honor Guard, which may seem like a weird inclusion, but this is a metagame call against the Golgari decks that play a ton of creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities, which the Honor Guard shuts down, and our deck doesn't play any creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities itself, so we're fine playing the Honor Guard. Then we also have four copies of Lava Coil as a nice removal spell, dealing four damage and exiling the creature. So this shines against the Drake deck, where they have a lot of four toughness creatures you need to kill. And of course, exiling the Arclight Phoenix means it doesn't come back from the graveyard. And also great against opposing copies of Rekindling Phoenix, as you can exile them. Then we've got the full four copies of History of Banalia as just a very good card on turn three. Can apply a ton of pressure and plays well if you draw multiple copies. Then we've got four copies of Resplendent Angel, which we've mentioned earlier, three mana for a 3-3 Angel with flying, and then at the beginning of each end step, if you've gained five or more life this turn, you can make a 4-4 Angel token with flying and vigilance, and for six mana you can give the Resplendent Angel plus two, plus two, and lifelink until end of turn, and of course if you get to connect with a 5-5 Resplendent Angel with lifelink, you get to make that Angel token at end of turn, so that's a way to get ahead. Then we also have two copies of Ixan's Binding as a nice removal spell that can exile an opposing permanent, and the opponent can't play any more cards with the same name as the exiled card, so can potentially strand some cards in the opponent's hand. And then we've got four copies of Rekindling Phoenix as a 4 mana 4 3 flyer, that when it dies it leaves behind a 0 1 token, so that we can sacrifice on our next upkeep to bring back the Phoenix from our graveyard into play, and it also gains haste, so a nice resilient threat. Then we've got three copies of Aurelia as a 4 mana 2 5 flyer with Mentor, and at the beginning of combat we can give one of our creatures plus 2 plus 0. If it's white it gains Vigilance, if it's red it gains Trample, and of course if it's both then it gains both Vigilance and Trample, and of course we can always target Aurelia herself to turn her into a 4 5 with Flying, Mentor, Vigilance and Trample, so a pretty powerful card. And then finally we've got our four copies of Lara Dawnbringer, which we've covered earlier. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, we are playing 25 lands, since we don't have any card draw and we do still want to reliably hit our land drops to be able to play our 4 and 5 drops on curve. And we also are playing 3 Boros Guildgates, since we want to make sure to have double red and double white in time, since we do want to be able to cast a Rekindling Phoenix as well as Resplendent Angel and History Banalia. So the Guildgates here are kind of a necessary evil. So we've got 9 Plains, 5 Mountains, 3 Guildgates, for Clifftop Retreat enters the battlefield untapped if we control a Plains or a Mountain, and then for Sacred Foundry which enters the battlefield untapped if we pay 2 life and counts as both a Mountain and a Plains. Then taking a quick look at our sideboard, we've got two copies of Seal Away as another cheap removal spell, we've got one Sorcerer's Spyglass against control decks to shut down Planeswalkers for example, we've got two copies of Treasure Map against the control matchups to let us draw some extra cards, we've got a Fight with Fire as another removal spell that can get rid of up to five toughness creatures, and in the late game if we've got a ton of mana can also potentially deal 10 damage. Then we've got three copies of Deafening Clarion as a sweeper effect against the Go Wide aggro decks, We've got an Excellence Binding as a catch-all removal spell, a Cellular Wreckage as another sweeper effect, two copies of the Mortal Sun, which can also be very strong against any deck relying on Planeswalkers, and then two copies of Banefire that can also be a finisher against some of the control decks, especially if they have Cellular Wreckage giving you extra lands that you can then use to cast a bigger Banefire. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's probably fine. We do need to draw some lands, but we've got some two drops we can play in the meantime. Up against the red deck, turn one Firebrand. All right, so Vanguard not the best in the red matchup since it dies so easily. Uh, Honor Guard still okay in the matchup since it does prevent uh, cards like the Pyromancer from dealing too damage to us and the Chain Warder from triggering as well. 
It's gonna be a Gitu Lava Runner on turn two. Let's play our Honor Guard. Which gets killed by a Wizard's Lightning. And now a Goblin Chain Whirler, which does get to trigger without uh, Honor Guard in play. Alright. Well, hopefully we can just curve into Lyra and she can uh, stabilize us. For now we can play an Angel, which blocks the Gitu Lava Runner. A scary card our opponent could have is Experimental Frenzy, since that uh, threatens to take over the late game. For now we'll just take three. Phoenix not the best here, since it can block the Chain Whirler, since otherwise they can finish off the 0-1 with the Firebrand. Since their opponent has a second Chain Whirler. Alright. Well, we do have the land, so we do get to eventually play a Lyra. So here we can either Ixalan's Binding one of their creatures, or we can play Phoenix, but the Phoenix doesn't block very well. I'm tempted to just play an Ixalan's Binding instead. Get rid of a Chain Whirler, prevent any future Chain Whirlers as well. And then keep the Angel on defense, and then hopefully our Angel survives and we get to connect with a life-linking Resplendent Angel after playing Lyra to try and stabilize us. It's gonna be a Steamkin. That's okay. And just a Chain Whirler attacking. Fair enough. So we're down to eight. We're just gonna jam a Lyra. Alright, opponent did also have the Pyromancer, so they had lots of creatures with Enter the Battlefield ability, so the Honor Guard would have been quite good, but hopefully Lyra's gonna be better here. And we don't have to attack with her Resplendent Angel necessarily, since a 4 4 on defense might be better than gaining 4 life on the spot. But I think I'm still gonna send. We would go to 10. Let's say they draw a 3 damage burn spell. I think we're still fine. So yeah, let's send Angel. We don't get to make a token here, but we do get to gain 4 life, which is the important part. Just need to make sure not to block a Goblin Chain Whirler here, since first strike from the Chain Whirler plus a burn spell could finish off Lyra. Opponent's just gonna send everyone, but after playing a land we're safe to block the Chain Whirler anyway. So yeah, opponent's pretty dead here. Resplendent Angel plus Lyra, too difficult for the red deck to overcome, especially in game one. After sideboard, our opponent could pick up some copies of Fight with Fire, that can deal with Lyra Dombringer. So we'll have to keep that in mind. How do we adjust after sideboard? Adanto Vanguard's pretty lackluster here as a one toughness creature. And don't really want to be paying for life to keep him alive. Uh, Seal Away can be a nice cheap removal spell that we might want. And I don't hate Ixalan's Binding as an answer to Experimental Frenzy, which otherwise could win them the late game. Definitely want the Clarions as well, so we'll need to make two more cuts. I think I'm tempted to cut two copies of Rekindling Phoenix, just because the three toughness doesn't block all that well in the face of a Goblin Chain Whirler. And if your opponent brings in some copies of Lava Coil potentially, then the Phoenix would just get exiled. And I think that's pretty much all we want. I don't think we want to sell the wreckage necessarily. I think this is okay. So your opponent's gonna be on the play. This hand's acceptable. Turn to Lava Coil or Honor Guard, and then Aurelia to help us stabilize. It's gonna be a turn one Lava Runner. Another Lava Coil could be useful. Alright. If our opponent plays something like a Steamkin, we probably want to Lava Coil it. Otherwise, I think I'm okay playing Honor Guard. Although there is the argument of Wizard's Lining, which for one mana can deal with Honor Guard. And then if we go Honor Guard, our opponent goes Wizard's Lining into another Burn spell, we're taking four all of a sudden. So we might be better off playing a Lava Coil on the Lava Runner. Yeah, don't hate it. And then next turn we'll survey the scene to see if we wanna play Honor Guard or Lava Coil. Opponent does have a Chain Whirler, which 
the honor guard could have potentially prevented one damage from but i think we'll be okay so now we'll just lava call the chain whirler and play tap sacred foundry instead and if we can just hit our land drops and play aurelia into lara we'll be able to pretty easily win the game as well and our opponent might use a fight with fire to deal with aurelia when we have a second one and we also have a lara so we'll see we're definitely not too upset if the first aurelia dies but for now she does a decent job of blocking as well and we do have an excellent binding for experimental frenzy all right they do have their own rekindling phoenix of course already used two copies of uh, lava coil which is our best answer to it binding could still be a nice answer to it or we could just jam a lara dawnbringer here and then gain five with aurelia which is probably better so even their opponent gets to block our aurelia for free with the phoenix aurelia still has trample so it gets in for a bit of extra damage and of course the important part is that we get to gain a ton of life as well and Lara still blocks the Phoenix pretty well thanks to First Strike. Alright. Aurelia targets herself. And gets in for 5. Vigilance, Trample and Lifelink. So her opponent's going to prevent 3 damage. So we'll see what the opponent comes up with here. If the Phoenix attacks, we definitely just want to block with Lyra. First Strike still deals with the Phoenix. The red decks usually don't play any pump spells. It's going to be a shock on Lyra. That's not good enough here, because First Strike means the Phoenix never gets to deal damage to Lyra in the first place. So it may have been a mistake on the opponent's part, but they're probably dead regardless here. So, All right. Let's uh, pump up Aurelia herself, I guess. And attack. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, so yeah, the mono red matchup can be pretty swingy if we get to resolve a Lara Dombringer. It's usually lights out, but sometimes they're fast enough where they can kill us before we can uh, gain the life. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand seems keepable. Of course, we do need to find a second white source pretty badly here, but in the meantime, we've got an honor guard and a lava coil, which uh, might buy us some time. All right, third history, so if our next draw up is a plains, I like our chances. I'll also take a sacred foundry or cliff top retreat and turn to Discovery, so it could be the Blue-Red Drake deck. Puts Arclight, Phoenix and Island in the graveyard. Sadly, no planes, but an Adanto Vanguard. All right. So unlikely that they get back the Phoenix this turn since Discovery Dispersal indicates that they're on the Goblin Electromancer version of the deck. Lava Coil kills Honor Guard. And of course, if they're on the Goblin Electromancer version, they're going to have fewer one-mana spells. But Adanto Vanguard's pretty good in the matchup, so we've got that going for us, and even drew a second copy. Definitely going to pay the four. And we've got a Lava Coil to answer a Fort Toughness creature, which could otherwise maybe block one of our vanguards. Yeah, there's Enigma Drake. Opponent could be holding a dive down. Some people play that main deck, but a second Lava Coil is not bad. All right, Lava Coil works. Get in for six. So 
Their opponent does still have that Arclight Phoenix in their graveyard, and they might be able to get it back this turn. But it's probably going to have to play defense. Yeah, if the Drake deck doesn't have Goblin Electromancer in play, their uh, deck is a lot more fair. So let's save the Vanguard. Opponent using Shock as a 4 damage burn spell here instead of just 2 damage. But it's still worth it. And another Shock, so they will get back Phoenix. If we pay 4, we go down to 8. Phoenix could potentially lead us down to 5. But that still feels pretty safe. So our opponent's 3 shocks dealt 12 damage, but as long as they don't deal the final point, it doesn't really matter. And Phoenix is going to get aggressive, but we do have a Lava Coil to kill it, so that's okay. Let's get in for 6. Could definitely die to a Drake with uh, maximized velocity. So hopefully that's not the case. They're gonna lead with Discovery. So they're probably hoping to find another Phoenix they can put in the graveyard. But instead they found a Goblin Electromancer which was not good enough at this point. And a radical idea, discarding Phoenix that they were holding. But they only cast two spells here, so they'll need an untapped plan plus a one-drop. Untapped plan is Mountain. Do they have another shock? They do. Wow. So yeah, they can just uh, shock our face and then Phoenix comes back for lethal. So they drew all four copies of shock this game. That's too bad. Alright, well. Hopefully in the next games we'll get to cast more than just two drops. So if this is a match we probably want Seal away, um, Fight with Fire is okay, and I think that's about it in terms of cards we want. Could also consider the Exxon's Binding, but it is a bit expensive. I don't mind the Shocks as a cheap answer to Goblin Electromancer. The Vanguards are great, Honor Guards kind of medium, it stops the enter battlefield ability from uh, Crackling Drake, but otherwise kind of lackluster. So I don't mind cutting some copies. Lava Coil's obviously great. Uh, the Angels are good as finishers and as blockers for the flying creatures. Do have to keep Niv-Mizzet in mind as well, so Exxon's Binding could potentially be a great answer to Niv-Mizzet that they might bring in out of the sideboard, although I'm not sure if Niv-Mizzet is where the opponent wants to be in this matchup. I think we're okay cutting the Honor Guards and then just bringing in the extra Exxon's Binding just as a hedge. Don't think the other cards are going to be of uh, much use. Definitely want to be on the play. This hand's not great, but we do have a turn to Vanguard. If we draw a red source, we've got a shock. Probably still have to mulligan this, since we need double red for Phoenix. We need three lands for Lara. So I think a, a random six with a scry is going to be better. All right, this is better indeed. And just trying to find a land on top. Resplendent Angel, not good enough here when we don't have double white. And there's no need to keep up shock on turn one. As they don't play any one-drop creatures we care about. Alright, turn to Vanguard. We've got our threat. And we've got two removal spells to back him up. Opponent could have cards like Entrancing Melody. After sideboard to seal the vanguard. Alright, looks like we're both stuck on lands here. Opponent does find a second one. We do have a shock for Goblin Electromancer at the ready. Instead they're gonna chart a course. This card's a phoenix. Alright. No double white for history, sadly. Kind of showing the importance of all those uh, dual lands in the deck. But now any land lets us cast a Phoenix and Aurelia, at least. And there's Enigma Drake. And of course, Lava Coil being a sorcery, a little awkward here. But we're still gonna use it. So 
So the Ixon's Binding, definitely reserved for the Drakes. Electromancer we can shock as soon as we get priority. Since that's what uh, shock is here for. Alright. Well, we have not been getting too lucky in terms of drawing lands in this uh, entire match so far. Opponent's already down to 8. And another Electromancer. Alright. Alright, still no lands, so I guess we're using a Lava Coil here. Could also attack first, but I doubt our opponent's blocking. Alright, let's Lava Coil. And I've got a Shock on Vanguard in response. Get 4 damage out of the deal. Still a bit surprising given the Phoenix in their graveyard. You would think they want to keep some spells in hand to trigger the Phoenix. And there's a Discovery. So we need 2 more attacks with the Vanguard here. And we've got 16 life to work with. Opponent puts Island in the graveyard. But they found another island anyway, and a charter course. So let's see if they have another shock here to get the phoenix back. They don't, so yeah, opponent definitely got punished there for uh, playing the shock when they did. And they scoop it up to the Adanto Vanguard. Alright, so any adjustments for game 3? I think we're still okay. Don't see any terrible cards. Yeah. Alright. We've got another two land opening hand on the draw. So we do have double rat for Phoenix, so we just need two lands. We can cast a seal away in the meantime, and we've got a fight with fire at three mana with any land drawn. So I think I'm willing to keep this one, but of course we'll need to draw some lands. On the play I might have mulliganed this, but on the draw. I think it's just good enough. And drawing it onto Vanguard is useful. Definitely our best turn to play in the matchup. Opponent stuck on one, and this time we are drawing lands. So we get to play a turn three Angel. If they play Electromancer, I think I would still fight with Fire instead of playing the Angel, just to slow them down. Opponent has to discard to hand size. They don't have a Phoenix to discard. So let's get in there. Alright, so not the most uh, interesting matchup, I guess, with both decks not really doing what they're designed to do. But we might get to curve out in this last game at least. Opponent does find a second lands, cast Discovery. So next turn we get to play Phoenix, and our opponent might just be too far behind on board. They could have a Lava Coil as a clean answer to Phoenix, but they'll need red mana. Although Aurelia has the upside of surviving an opposing Lava Coil, so it might actually be better to play Aurelia instead here. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet, so managed to beat Blue Red Drakes, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's probably keepable. Turn 2 Lava Coil for interaction, turn 3 Angel, turn 4 Phoenix. Let's see what we're up against. A tapped Dragon Skull Summit. Interesting. Alright, looks like a Grixis deck, so we can expect lots of removal. So they might have Lava Coils and Vraska's Contempts as clean answers to Rekindling Phoenix. Untapped Watery Grave, so they're keeping up a Counterspell here, which uh, we might just want to play a Resplendent Angel into it. We could do nothing, which could also be reasonable, and then just play a Threat next turn, not make them use their mana efficiently. Of course, could also be a bluff. And we're going to have to get the Counterspells out of their hand eventually with uh, this type of deck. So I think we'll just give them another Angel to counter here. Of 
They do have the sabotage. Opponent keeps the card on top. If they play something like a Nicol Bolas, we can discard the land and then Lava Coil Nicol Bolas. Alright, Adanto Vanguard should be reasonable in this matchup, but given that they have access to black mana, they could have some uh, clean answers to the Vanguard, like Francis Contempt, Moment of Craving, which the Jeska control decks don't have access to. I think I'll play a land here to play around Syncopate for three, and then just play a Vanguard instead of deploying one of our more expensive threats. Opponent does have Contempt on the Angel. And we get to resolve our Vanguard. That's okay. And the Eldest Reborn. Alright, that explains their line. So we're gonna have to sacrifice a Vanguard, sadly. But then we get to resolve Rekindling Phoenix. And hopefully they don't have another Frascus Contempt. Yeah, the Eldest Reborn is very good against us since we're playing all these expensive threats, so we are unlikely to have multiple creatures in play that we want to sacrifice. Let's get rid of the Lava Coil. And Aurelia plus Phoenix can at least finish off Angrath here, which is nice. Opponent could get back Angrath if they want to, but that's fine. Instead they go for Angel, which we can answer with our own Lava Coil. Alright, let's see what they've got left. Still a lot of cards in hand for the opponent. So it definitely feels like we're behind. That eye tracker could potentially exile the Rekindling Phoenix we have in our graveyard. So definitely an annoying card. Opponent's got four mana up. So I think our play is going to be to pump up Aurelia, attack with both. If they block Angel and Phoenix in the hopes of being able to use Tracker to exile the Phoenix, we can Lava Coil the Tracker second main phase. I think that's reasonable. So we'll pump up Aurelia herself. So she can attack past the Angel. Opponent is going for the trade. And then we could play Lava Coil first to play around Syncopate, or we could play a Danto Vanguard first to play around a general counterspell. I think we'll play the Vanguard first, since it's more likely that they have a Sinister Sabotage than they do have a Syncopate, I think. Alright, there's a Sabotage. And then we get to Lava Coil the Tracker to potentially get back our Phoenix unless they have another removal spell for the token. All right, so we're empty-handed. Hopefully we get back a Phoenix and we have an Aurelia. But it looks like they have a Moment of Craving, which could have answered the Adanto Vanguard as well, but now answers our Rekindling Phoenix for good. So now it's Aurelia versus three cards in hand, opponent at 12, so don't love our chances here. All right, guess we'll play a Lyra. Pumps up Aurelia if uh, she resolves. At least we're safe from cast down, which can only kill non-legendary creatures. Alright, Aurelia connects, put them down to 7. So who knows, maybe they're out of removal. Another Eldest Reborn's too bad. So I think we want to sacrifice Aurelia, mostly because if uh, the third chapter from Eldest Reborn happens, we don't want our opponent gaining control of uh, Lara Dawnbringer. I think that's reasonable. So it's like Aurelia, plus Lara of course gets in for more damage by herself. Phoenix was a good draw. Alright, so our Mythic Rares might get the job done anyway here. But you can easily imagine a scenario where we draw one or two too many lands, and then uh, our opponent has enough answers for all our creatures and then just pulls ahead with all the card draw and all the two-for-ones they have in their deck. Whereas we just have to rely on having enough powerful threats to finish off our opponent before they stabilize. 
All right, so we got game one. So how do we approach this matchup after sideboard? Spyglass could be okay, shuts down Planeswalkers. Although, of course, they're not a Teferi deck. Angrath we can probably deal with. Although Immortal Sun is probably good enough as just a powerful artifact that once we get it in play, it's going to be difficult for the opponent to remove. Treasure Map is probably good enough too. And then Ixon's Binding, I think that's probably about it. Opponent could have a transformational sideboard plan where they bring in Thief of Sanity, but with all the flyers we have, I don't think that's a major concern. So Shock can go. Honor Guard's probably not very good either. And Lava Coil seemed a bit lackluster. So maybe we're better off with a Fight with Fire as kind of a hedge that in the late game can still maybe deal 10 damage. Instead of the Lava Coils, I guess Banefire is also an upgrade over Lava Coil for the most part. Can still get rid of the pirate that exiles cards from our graveyard. And then the Honor Guard we said was also not great. So do we have anything better than the two remaining Honor Guards? Maybe Spyglass? Yeah, I could see Spyglass being better than Honor Guard. Maybe shuts down an Ascanta, or well, the Sunken Ruin, since if you name Ascanta, it doesn't do much, but if you name Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, it can uh, shut that down. All right, we'll try this. Also possible that Shock would be better than the remaining Honor Guard, or maybe a Lava Coil as another removal spell that can maybe get rid of a uh, Nicol Bolas. But we do still have the Ixalan's Bindings as nice answers to creatures as well. All right, this hand seems good. Just need to draw some lands, and we get to curve history into Phoenix, into Lara, into the Immortal Sun. Let's play another tapped foundry. So yeah, our ideal curve against a control deck like this one is probably a turn two Adanto Vanguard, turn three history, turn four Phoenix, turn five. Lara potentially into the Immortal Sun, so we're pretty close to having that ideal curve. History resolves. Opponent might have a removal spell end of turn here, Moment of Craving on the Knight token. That's okay. Still have the second Knight token on the way. And the Knight token also gives us a bit of insurance against an Eldest Reborn, for example. So our opponent takes two from the Steam Vents to potentially keep up a counterspell here. But instead it's going to be a Thief of Sanity, alright, so kind of like we expected. They're on the transformational plan with Thief of Sanity, so we've got a few options here. We could just play Phoenix, but if they go Black Source into Vraska's Contempt on our Phoenix, we're going to be pretty sad. So we could just uh, use an Ixalan's Binding instead. I think I'm leaning towards just getting rid of the Thief of Sanity, given that we've got a pretty powerful hand. We don't really need to take the risk. And if they're holding multiple copies of the Thief, those will be stranded as well. Since Grixis doesn't really have answers to enchantments for the most part, they might have a bounce effect in blue to get rid of it temporarily. It's going to be Moment of Craving on the Knight. All right, so unless they've got an Essence Scatter here, the Phoenix is going to resolve. And I think I do prefer playing the Phoenix over Lyra. Plays around Syncopate as well. All right, they do have Disdainful Stroke instead. All right, I guess uh, that also works. Opponent says go. I think we jam Lyra over Angel. Another Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, Disdainful Stroke definitely good against us. Most of our good cards are rather expensive. Opponent says go. Boris Guildgate, so we can't play Mortal Sun this turn. But we will be able to next turn. Angel gets sabotaged. All right, hopefully the Mortal Sun sticks. Opponent says go. Adanto Vanguard. All right, it's tempting to play the Immortal Sun here, but maybe we might uh, get them to use another counterspell on Adanto Vanguard. If they're holding another Moment of Craving, for example, then of course that would not necessarily be the case. Vraska's Contempt, we would much rather just play the Immortal Sun. So I think we just jam Immortal Sun, hope they're out of counterspells. But it looks like they have another Sabotage, it's too bad. So it's definitely possible had we played Vanguard, and if they weren't holding another Removal spell that they would have had to use the sabotage on the vanguard, and then we get to 
resolve the Immortal Sun afterwards. Instead, this information campaign, and it's very interesting what to discard here. Since we could just binding the campaign, make sure they don't get to play any future copies. If they have Surveil, they don't get to replay the campaign, or we could just keep the Vanguard to have a bit of pressure. But I don't think the Vanguard is going to be able to go the distance. So I think I will keep the Exxon's Binding instead, and just kind of uh, play for the long game. And a Thought Erasure to make us discard, so in the end it didn't really matter. Alright, opponent gets their campaign back. I guess we'll play the Mountain. Alright, so now we're top decking, but our opponent has a bit more card in their deck than we have. So I don't like our spot. So if we did end up uh, playing Adanto Vanguard instead of the Immortal Sun, our opponent would have had the Thought Erasure anyway. Phoenix is not bad, but they do have a Dead Eye Tracker, so killing the Phoenix is going to be enough to get rid of it permanently. So who knows? Opponent says go. We'll attack. And our opponent has a Dream Eater. Alright. So that can bounce a permanence. Either the Phoenix or the Ixalan's Binding. And lets them surveil, which returns the Disinformation campaign as well. Let's see if they want to bounce the Phoenix. If they do. Alright, let's replay the Phoenix. But now, of course, they can just... Uh, Trade Dream Meter for Phoenix and then exile the Phoenix with a tracker. Probably should have just played our land here, but there's a chance they had another important card they wanted to play, but they wanted to play a campaign just to make us discard instead. Lyra Dawnbringer could do some stuff. I think we want to play Lyra first to see if she resolves. Might inform our decision whether or not we want to attack with the Phoenix. Another Sinister Sabotage returning campaign. So yeah, this campaign has uh, provided quite a bit of uh, card advantage to our opponent. So I don't think we want to attack with a Phoenix here. I guess we should have played a land since we did side in Banefires, so every extra land drop we hit is actually still somewhat relevant, but of course with our opponent at 22, Banefire is not really close to killing them, and they have a Vraska's Contempt too for the Phoenix, so this is the point in the game where we're gonna fall further and further behind. We did have a few decisions on turn 4, whether to play the Phoenix or to binding the Thief of Sanity. And there we see Nicol Bolas as well. So yeah, this game is uh, definitely over. And then we had the decision between whether or not we wanted to play the Vanguard or the Immortal Sun. But our opponent had uh, all the answers anyway, so it didn't really end up mattering. Alright, so we did see Nicol Bolas in the end. Could be a reason to want some number of Lava Coils anyway. Honor Guard does shut down Dream Eater as well as Nicol Bolas, so it does have a little bit of value. And also protects us from the Eldest Reborn a little bit. So it might still be okay. Sorcerer Spyglass doesn't really shut down much since their opponent doesn't seem to be playing many Planeswalkers. So I could see cutting the Spyglass. Treasure maps would have been fine. Fight with Fire is probably fine as kind of a hedge as removal for Nicol Bolas and Thief of Sanity. Definitely like the Ixon's Bindings. So what's our last card going to be? Is it going to be a second Honor Guard or maybe a Lava Coil? I think I'll go with a Lava Coil. Would like to be on the play. This hand seems okay. Do need a second white source, but... We've got a turn to Vanguard, which of course does get answered by Moment of Craving, but if they don't have it, it could deal some damage early. And then of course the Immortal Sun, which might be one of our more important cards in the matchup, just to get ahead on cards. Dead Eye Tracker. That's fine. Alright, we did find the second planes at least. 
So our hand is shaping up nicely. We've got an Aurelia followed by a Lyra potentially. But our opponent's got so much removal that the Angel synergies are probably not going to come to fruition. But if they're holding a bunch of counter spells, we do have two relevant creatures in play which can pressure them. So we've got that going for us. I don't mind playing Aurelia over Second Angel because if their counter spell is Disdainful Stroke, they don't get to use their mana as efficiently as a Sinister Sabotage would. So let's play Aurelia. And they do have Disdainful Stroke. Alright, let's attack with both. Since you can imagine a scenario where our opponent has both Disdainful Stroke and Sabotage, they want to use a stroke on Aurelia to keep Sabotage in hand. But then if we played our Angel, they get to Sabotage, and the next turn when we play Aurelia, they have both the Zainful Stroke and two mana left over to maybe activate the Dead Eye Tracker or do something else. So making the control opponent kind of waste mana in certain spots could also be a way to gain an incremental advantage. Alright. That being said, we're just gonna jam Lyra here. Opponent's got another Disdainful Stroke. Alright, hopefully we can get rid of all their counter spells by the time we play Mortal Sun. So their opponent had a pretty aggressive chum block with the Dead Eye Tracker last turn, which indicates that their hand might be a little bit weak to the Adanto Vanguard. Or that they just have a powerful late game that they're trying to get to and they just want to survive at all costs. They play Steam Vents tapped. And they ship the turn. And we did find a land, so we even have the option of pumping our Resplendent Angel, which would be pretty bad in the face of Avraska's Contempt, so I don't love it. So I think the play is attack with both. If they have a Contempt, they might be tempted to use it, and then we maybe get to resolve Immortal Sun. Could of course Immortal Sun first, if it resolves and they don't have anything, they're dead, but that's super unlikely. So I prefer baiting out the removal spell and then resolving Mortal Sun to take over the game, as opposed to getting the Immortal Sun countered. And yep, there's the Vraska's Contempt. Since, yeah, imagine the scenario where opponent both has the Vraska's Contempt and a Counterspell. I think this outcome is the desirable one since we weren't threatening lethal, so they could have afforded to take the damage, counter the Immortal Sun, and then Contempt the Angel. And then we would have been left with the Vanguard, which may or may not uh, get the job done, but now with the Resolved Immortal Sun, we might be favored going late, which uh, is important. All right. Let's uh, get in with the Vanguard, which our opponent still needs to find an answer to. And we'll play Resplendent Angel, probably want to keep land in hand to protect from a discard effect. Alright, they have a Sabotage as well, so your opponent both had the Sabotage and the Contempt. But now we have Immortal Sun in play, which is going to be difficult for the opponent to get rid of. So let's pass a turn. They did find Moment of Craving which deals with Adanto Vanguard even through the plus one plus one. So they are alive. But every turn that goes by, we get to draw an extra card. Sadly, Mortal Sun is legendary, so we don't get to play a second copy. I'll still play the Sacred Foundry here. Say go. So just need to wait until we find some more threats. But at least we're holding an Exile's Binding, so we're not going to die anytime soon. Opponent says go. Banefire is not a bad one. When our opponent's at five... So, I imagine an uncounterable Banefire is good enough here. So we can play Banefire for X equals 8, thanks to the Immortal Sun. So might as well go all the way. And that's going to do it. Sweet. So some very interesting games here against Grixis Control. But at the end of the day, the Immortal Sun proved to be too powerful. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.